It's the right time for a new finance minister to deliver on that plan for the long and challenging road ahead. That's why I'll be stepping down as finance minister and as member of parliament for Toronto Centre. A big shakeup in Ottawa tonight. Bill Morneau has resigned as finance minister and from his seat as an MP. So what was the breaking point? Who is up next for the job? We had to call in at issue for this. They don't ever get a break. Chantelle Hebert is in Montreal. Andrew Coyne is in Toronto. And Althea Raj is here in Ottawa. Thank you all for coming back. You're going to have to come back uh, for the Conservative leadership too. But but let's start with today. Uh, Chantelle, when we last talked about this a couple weeks back, uh, you you seem to seem to believe that Bill Morneau was not long for his job, and here we are. What what do you make of the reasons he gave tonight, and what do you think they really are? When I told you that uh, two weeks ago, I had not yet uh, witnessed what we all witnessed, which was a finance minister left hanging uh, in the wind in the media for the better part of that time. Uh, and what led to that, I don't actually believe it's just the uh, we stuff and, and the trip. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Bill Morneau and the Prime Minister had become, and that's becoming a familiar story with this government, uh, that the Prime Minister becomes uh, detached, disconnected from his ministers. And at some point, if it had been me, instead of Bill Morneau watching uh, the coverage uh, and the sources saying this and that, mm. uh, I guess uh, I would have uh, decided that someone wanted me to resign. And and the, the way that this happened, Andrew, that this bid for the Secretary General of the OECD, sh sh how should we read that, do you think? Uh, it's a ridiculous cover story that you would leave as G7 finance minister in the middle of the worst economic crisis in a century when huge decisions are being made to have a maybe possible shot at the Secretary General of OECD, which is not a particularly important post, frankly. I think the only reason they hit on that story was to make the philosophical difference cover story seem uh, more plausible by comparison. But I don't find it particularly credible either that suddenly there's this huge gulf in vision between the finance minister and the prime minister, uh, that suddenly Bill Morneau, who's presided over larger and larger deficits year after year after year, is suddenly recast as this skinflint who's somehow standing in the way of the prime minister's vision. It, none of that makes sense either. So I guess I'm more in the camp that said uh, this was a dignified way to throw Mr. Morneau, Mr. Morneau overboard without having to raise uncomfortable questions as to why the prime minister should not have to walk the plank for the same sins. Uh, Althea, what, what, what do you make of the reasoning or the explanations that Mr. Morneau gave today? Well, I think on this uh, panel, we all agree that the Prime Minister's office basically engineered uh, Bill Morneau's way uh, out of office. Um, the we story, um, if they had focused on that, would only cast uh, attention on the fact that the Prime Minister was unwill unwilling to resign for the very same offences that they were saying Mr. Morneau had to go. Um, the differences uh, in ideology between Mr. Morneau and Mr. Trudeau have been well known for several years. Uh, he was very uncomfortable with the level of um, federal largesse, shall we say, that was in the very first budget. And at the time, there were other people in the cabinet who also shared uh, his views, like uh, Mr. Bryson, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we did not hear um, at the time from Mr. Morneau. Mr. Morneau has not been the Jim Flaherty of yeah. the Trudeau government. He has not tried to, behind the scenes, let it known that he disagrees with Mr. Trudeau on these things. He's been fiercely loyal. And for that loyalty, he has been rewarded with <laughs> basically like a, a smear campaign of sorts that Mr. Trudeau could have put an end to if he had wanted to, and he chose not to. Okay, so Chantal, you can riff off that if you want, but we are now, you know, at, at the end of the first wave of, of a pandemic. I'm not sure we've ever in this country been in uh, a recession, depression, without a finance minister. Uh, who should we expect? How soon should we expect it? Probably tomorrow, I'm thinking. But what, what is your sense of the urgency around that? Well, there is, uh, it would be unheard of to have an interim finance minister. So yes, the expectation that we will have a finance minister tomorrow makes a lot of sense. Those uh, 
who still believe that uh, someone like Mark Carney is about to set onto the scene and run in a by-election, everything we hear tonight is that that is not happening. Okay. So expect someone who is currently in cabinet to become the finance minister. That's the general expectation. Whether that will reassure Canadians who are increasingly worried about the management, not of the pandemic, but of the, of the fiscal consequences of the pandemic is very much an open question. Mm -hmm. uh, to have a rookie finance minister, who, even someone who is actually in cabinet at a time like this, is uh, not only particularly challenging, but not confidence inspiring. And, and, and the, the challenges that that finance minister has to encounter very quickly, uh, Andrew, even if they've been around the cabinet table already, are, are I mean, will, will remain unprecedented even the months ahead. Yeah, and the biggest challenge is that the, the prime minister is the real finance minister. Uh, he ran the table with Mr. Morneau, frankly, over the years, uh, as his people were boasting about uh, in, behind the scenes in, uh, in these anonymous leaks over the last few days. So whoever comes in there, it's a thankless job because your job as finance minister is to say no, to be the skeptic, to be asking those kind of questions. And if it's clear that the finance, the prime minister now views a $343 billion deficit as not nearly enough and that we need to go into much grander levels of debt, um, that's, that, that's a pretty thankless assignment. Although, uh, Althea, if you appoint someone who you know is sort of on the same page as you, perhaps you, you, you removed all the obstacles and challenges that you were presumably going to encounter with Bill Morneau. Although you have to pause for a second and think, do you want a cabinet with only members who agree with you? Or do you want to have sure. real policy discussion? And you kind of need that back and forth. And I thought it was interesting today when, you know, I asked uh, Minister Moner what he thought the next finance, what skill set yeah. he thought the next finance minister should have. And he said, well, that's not up to me to decide. It's up to the, to, uh, the prime minister. And you could have easily made an argument for Mark Carney, who I am told is definitely not going to be the mm -hmm, finance mm -hmm. minister. But, you know, this is a government that likes to virtue signal and say, you know, so-and-so, first female finance minister, let's say, appointed, as many of us expect it to be, Christia Freeland. But um, if you had to put a white man in that job, you could have said, well, no one really has the credentials that Mark Carney has. But there is nobody at the cabinet table at the moment that has credentials, <laughs> financial credentials, frankly, that are better than Minister Morneau's. Mm -hmm. So um, it will be up to them to try to explain that decision. I, I just have a couple of minutes, but what does this, I'm not going to ask you about an election because I, I don't think that's what it is, but what does this do to the government's attempt to try and end the talk around we, the we controversy, and turn the page and move to other things? Does it help? Does it hurt? Chantal? <sighs> Well, if you're going to take a controversy that for many Canadians remains a, a small controversy and change the channel to a bigger uh, controversy, which is do we have uh, a team that is equipped to deal with what may be coming down the road with the pandemic, uh, that's, you know, one way to change the channel, I guess, to lose your finance minister in the middle of a huge crisis. As to Althea's point about having people around the cabinet table that can uh, not always be yes people, mm -hmm. I think we may be way past that in the case of this government, considering the list of people who have left, mm -hmm. uh, who came with Justin Trudeau to cabinet uh, in 2015. Interesting. Uh, Andrew, qu just quickly on whether you think this marks, I mean, obviously it's a turning point, but whether it's the one that the government wants or not. I can't see this uh, quieting talk of the we controversy when the finance minister is its most uh, visible and prominent uh, victim. Uh, you know, we keep having these scandals that liberal partisans dismiss as nothing burgers that result in high level resignations. Uh, that's not particularly going to make this go away. Althea? Oh, I agree with that. And uh, usually the ethics commissioner continues reports well into whether or not you have resigned. So uh, we should expect that there will be a pronouncement on Mr. Morneau's uh, ethical failings, alleged ethical failings, as well as the prime minister is, uh, you know, shortly, perhaps in time for an election. This is a, a remarkable day, right? I mean, this isn't something that we have seen. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before, but nothing like this. Am I wrong, Chantel? Uh, no, uh, no, but then uh, remember that we spent an entire weekend not being able to this day to say whether Paul Martin had been fired or yeah. resigned. Right. Uh, and, and the loss of Paul Martin to Jean Chrétien was a serious hit. Uh, that Jim Flaherty cut the legs from under 
Stephen Harper's uh, top campaign economic promise, fiscal promise uh, on income splitting uh, on his way out. So it is not yeah. unheard of for prime ministers and ministers of finance to become estranged. They tend not to be doing that less than a year after an election and in the middle of a huge crisis. Okay. Thank you all. I appreciate you all coming in. Please stay by your phones. I'm likely to call again very soon. <laughs> Chantel, Andrew, and Althea, at least they get to stay home and do it. All right. That is at issue for uh, today.